I, I can't figure out where we are either. I thought I knew my way around here last year, but I don't get where we are. Mary? 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 Oh, so far away. I like that ratchet noise. We had to switch out yeah. because it got a little bit hairy yesterday. And I can't see. Uh, actually, I can use some help back here. It's all messed up. You can't put it in. No, just that little car at the bottom. There you go. That's all it was. A lot of people in blind sailing, and I've heard this said, will say, you're taking too many risks of being reckless. No, it's a calculated risk. The competition being so stiff, and what we saw in one of the mark roundings, on the Lewis mark rounding, is one of the blind sailors fell overboard. When you can see, as soon as you see something, you react upon mm -hmm. it. When you cannot see, is somebody giving directions, a mm -hmm. few second delay. It's like, let it out slow, let it out yeah. slow. If I let it slip a little too fast, that can cost us. That's right. And getting up there to wing that quick. Yeah. A can puts me to the test. We were winging on the left, and we jive and wing on the right. And then we go back to the left, and we go back to the right. So it was just a continuous, and then we would reach. So for me, I just felt like I was holding on for dear life. At the mark roundings, at the starts, I mean, imagine, I can't even imagine not being able to see and having to anticipate what's coming next. You want to let the driver know first which gate we're headed towards and which jibe we're going to be on as we approach the mark. That's what I want to hear when I'm driving. If we have a clear picture of that, we can manage all the boats coming in and the quote unquote chaos, right? It turns into no fire and now we've got a plan and we can just coolly sail through, through the, uh, the chaos. People seem to be panicking at the last minute about Either which way to go, I can't tell. You're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to hear from you all. Which way, to, which gate to go to, or which mark to go to, I should say. Panic in a blind boat? Yeah. No, they yeah. Panic. I see. I see a lot of panic. <laughs> when I was young in Africa, we walked by. We see a blind person sitting, you know, putting head like this, begging for money. We would take a bottle, you know, beer bottle ca uh, cup. We would drop in his hand. Oh, he threw it out. No, that's not money. We thought, oh, you can see. We, we, you know, I've seen people used to beat them up. Our society has always been visual and is becoming increasingly so from reading newspapers, books, and computer screens to text messages. I was weepy. I, I cried because nobody wants to be blind. Nobody wants to lose vision. Nobody wants to struggle through life. And every time you go to the doctors, you go with hope that they're going to give you news that things will change. But things don't change. Can you read that letter? And when I take this away, the, do they go much further apart horizontally? They're side by side, but they're really far apart. Right. So this brought it closer, but not together. Right. Their, their edges are touching. OK. Let me see if I can do better. Look right at it. I went there thinking I, I was seeing so much better, and hoping they would say, here's this prescription. We could help you. And yes, it's been three years, but you can have your driver's license back. I know it's untouchable and that's ridiculous, but none of us, I don't give that hope up. And I know it's not gonna happen. So you get yourself on a high to get there, and then you leave on a low of reality. But it's those lows that give me the energy to reach into my heart to advocate for others. Everybody thinks that you become blind when older, but how can you have a 16 years old kid become blind? When we sell as visually impaired, we need people who are sighted to guide us for certain things. I hear, I feel the, you know, the air in both my side and my ear. Okay, this side's going off, I'm gonna go back in. But where are you pointing to? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so we're gonna be just uh, stay calm and uh, watch who's coming after us. Today, so Inky and away. I are gonna keep our eyes out for the water keep. and fill in our guides on what's going on. <laughs> I was in my last year of college. I underwent emergency neurosurgery to remove a benign tumor that had developed underneath my skull. There was some damage done to my optic nerves, which left me to lose a lot of my functional vision and sent me into a spiral of depression, and I thought my life would be over. And sailing has taught me to, to really drive drive myself and, and motivate myself to to go, go really go out there and, and challenge myself, constantly keep on challenging myself to see what my own limitations are. And people ask me, you know, it's the craziest thing you've ever done. It's like, oh, I race sailboats. Okay, easy. All right, prepare to dive. Shine. Okay, head back down here. All good. Hold it right here. Right we just sort of stumbled along into this thing. And then here we are at Worlds. There were 17 races. I think the first eight we finished last. <laughs> And then, but de definitely towards the end, we were beating some of the other teams. I mean, all these guys like Matt has been sailing for at least over 30 years or something like that. IFDS have made a proposal uh, to the International Paralympic Committee, the IPC, to have the entry of blind sailing into the Paralympics. The, the whole thing about inclusion, what we've done, you know, the whole idea of, is it, philosophically of, of fleet racing is that it's not a question of Side helping the blind, it's a question of all of us working together as a unit to make the race happen. Uh, hopefully uh, to be out in front. While Homeris has some advantages in terms of being able to do it yourself, it also, to me, serves to isolate us rather than include us into the sailing community. That team is a full team that's going to compete in Newport. I think once you start losing your vision, you have to learn to trust people in many ways. I have to trust my sighted guides and the skipper because I can't see what's going on and as the other boat get close to us you can hear their voices escalate. You don't know how close you are to having that collision. Here in the United States, we're really trying to integrate blind sailors into our disabled sailing program more and more. There's been a little bit of a barrier and a resistance by some of the other disabled sailors that have more physical limitations and that they perceive the blind sailors as having, as being able-bodied, as having arms and legs and core stability and not really realizing how big a visual impairment is in terms of a disability. When you lose your driver's license, you lose that independence, you, learn, you lose the dis that ability to make decisions for yourself, that freedom to get up and go. When you get on that boat, even though you're under the direction of your sighted guide, they're your passenger and you're driving against the wind, but you're driving once again. You have that independence. It's the only freedom that, you really, that I really feel that I have with that vision loss. Brian, check it out. Is it spelled right? Spell. Braille? <laughs> yeah. M A R V I N. It's C. Here. I mean, right here. C. They don't care. You're right. It's a fine thing. Inky's turn again. Right. Yes. Oh, Inky, there you go. <laughs> I'm winning them, man. Oh, is that so oh, cool? Sure. Where's, where's his piece? His piece is down at the far end. Of the I am the boots. So, buddy, you'll go back to the new tours. Brian Carl. I got it. Got it. Go, just one, buddy. Go. Okay. Yes. 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 We are building and loan matures. Collect $150. I do want to get to the worlds. I do want to get to the worlds in Japan. And I want the transition to be smooth and have all the knowledge of sailing that I should have. Train me where you want me to train and I'll sail wherever you want me to sail. <laughs> <laughs>